Well, my career began with my very first novel, which, I mean, it's an extraordinary story, was Wideacre. Uh, I was just finishing my PhD. So for my PhD, I'd read nearly 200 18th century novels. And so by accident, really, I'd served an apprenticeship in, into how the novel works and is put together. And so for fun, I started writing uh, a novel which was set in the 18th century, so it was a period I was really familiar with. And to my absolute amazement, that became a worldwide bestseller. It was an extraordinary experience. Uh, I went to university later in life to read English, and I thought I'd be a student of English, and I did a taster course in history at the University of Sussex. And I, it just seemed to me that it explained everything. And it still seems to me that it explains everything. I just like, you know, film people would say, I just like the backstory. Whatever happens, I all, whatever, if I look at a building, if someone tells me about an event, I always ask them what happened before, what was there before, how did this come about when it originated? That just seems to me, if you know that, I think you're on a way to, to understanding the present. The research for the novels is, is probably, takes as long as the writing of the novels. It's at least half of the effort and the energy, probably a bit more. For about a year or so, I just read everything that I can find in the bookshops. And then I go into libraries, a private library in London, and I read a lot of the Victorian historians. And they're very interesting because they have a very different perspective from us. They're much more interested in the politics and the religion than we are these days. Um, and then sometimes I read original documents and I always go to the places that I'm going to be talking about. So I visit sites and sometimes roads, houses, sometimes the countryside. And when a book's really successful, it's wonderful. For a start, you go into a bookshop and you go in and there's your book. So you always get this terrific buzz and my children go into bookshops and they, I mean, they get a big buzz out of it as well. So that's really exciting. It's incredible when you go somewhere, you're on a holiday and you're in a tiny village in Greece somewhere and you walk into a bookshop or into a kind of, you know, place where you can buy your picnic and there are some English novels and there's your book. That, that's an extraordinary feeling. It's very odd also to be on a train or a plane and see people reading your book. I must say, I find that, I can't tell you why, but for some reason, I find it intensely embarrassing. I never tell anyone that it's my book. I always look at them and I wonder where they are and I look at their faces and see if they're laughing at a funny bit or if they're, you know, riveted. 